The topic that I've chosen for today is the role of Andhra in the Indian national movement. We all know that we have been ruled by the British and we got our freedom in 1947 in the month of August. And the impact of the national movement also was felt in Andhra Pradesh. Andhra Pradesh has actively taken part in this particular and very important moment that happened in our country. So the latter half of the 19th century was the beginning of new ideas in the minds of the Andhras, with the establishment of the University of Madras in 18 1857, higher education received an impetus. And many missionary societies also have come to India, and they have done their bit in promoting education, in educating the masses. In 1843, there was a church missionary society who estab which established a school at Machlipatnam. And later, it became a college in 1864. The idea was to impart Western education. In the same way, the government of Madras also started a second grade college at Rajamandri in 1873, and it became a degree college in 1877. So what we understand is that the spread of English education in Andhra especially in the coastal districts, created a new class of elite imbued with the liberalism of the West. The orthodox set of the Hindu society of the time had suffocated the people, and they gave up their attitude of uncritical deference to authority, tradition, and custom, and became pioneers of the social and political reform movement. And being influenced by the Western education, there have been some eminent reformers who did their best to bring about significant changes in the society. And a very important person that we need to remember from Andhra was Kandukuri Virislingam. And his work among the women to ameliorate the condition of the women in the society is very noteworthy. And then talking about the political awakening in Andhra, we see that the Indian National Congress was established in 1885, and uh, that gave an impetus to the establishment of various district associations, such as the Krishna District Association, first of its kind in Madras Presidency. And then uh, there was the Krishna District Conference that was established by Ramaswamy Gupta. So in such ways, now we do see that a number of conferences have been established. So, a number of societies have been established. And uh, the political awakening of Andhra emerged. And they became more and more involved in the national movement, especially with the partition of Bengal in 1905. And one more thing that has helped uh, this uh, new uh, movement or this kind of a development was the rise of journalism. We see that during 1858 and, and uh, 1905, we see the rise of Telugu journalism. And there was a Satyaduta, the first Telugu journal published by the Christian Association Ballari. And so we see that the spread of education and the rise of Telugu journalism also accelerated the pace of public life in the coastal districts. And to further the political ideas, many associations have been formed. Now, uh, one uh, significant development was uh, in the month of May, 1884, there was the Madras Mahajana Sabha. And uh, eminent uh, Andras, like Mr. P. Rangaya Nairu was a president, and uh, P. Ananda Charyulu was a secretary, and many delegates from Telugu districts also attended the first conference of the Sabha. That only gives us a clue that the, the Andhra, people of Andhra were very much you know, concerned, uh, very much involved in the national movement. And then when the Indian National Congress was formed at Bombay, a number of delegates from Berhampur, Machlipatnam, Kadapa, and Bellari, and Anandapur, Anandapur also attended it. Some of the prominent members who attended this particular meeting were P. Rangaya Naidu, P. Ananda Charyulu, and Subbarav Pantulu, etc. In all, 21 delegates from Andhra, they have attended it. That was especially the Calcutta session of the Congress in 1886. And the Nagpur session of Congress in 1891 was presided over by 
P. Anandacharyulu. So what I'm trying to tell you is that the people from Andhra were very much involved in the national movement. And one movement which uh, actually accelerated the pace of political life in Andhra was the Vande Matra movement. So in the beginning of the 20th century, we see that the national movement in India acquired a new vigor and momentum. We see the involvement of people like Tilak, Bipin Chandrapal, Aurobindo Ghosh, who tried to take forward the movement in a different way. Until that time, we see that you know um, there was the moderates who were mostly involved uh, with the working of the Congress, and their ideas were quite quite moderate. Okay, and they had their own uh, they had their own um, demands, but they wanted to have them in a very peaceful manner. So the Congress leaders had good faith in the British liber liberalism. But then, when they did not get the positive response that they wanted, they became frustrated. And then we see that we see the influence of Balaganga, the Tilak, who have introduced a different kind of leadership. So, a new spirit of opposition to the government was being developed among a section of the educated community under the leadership of Balaganga, the Tilak. And uh, the activities that he has taken up were the celebration of Ganesh festival and the revival of the cult of Shivaji. And Tilak stimulated the national spirit in Maharashtra. And the spirit of unrest and discontent voiced by Tilak soon spread to other parts of the country, including Andhra. And moreover, during that time, during 1904 and 1905, we see that a small country like Japan had won a very uh, good victory over Russia which gave the hope to the Andhra people that even they can fight against a, a big country like England and someday they would also become free. So in Andhra, the victory of Japan created interest in that country and many people uh, began to read about their country. They began to write books about their country. Some of the people even named their children of, uh, after the Japanese, like you know, Togo and Nogi. The Raj of Munagala named his sons Togo and Nogi. That only shows that the people were very much involved in what was happening and they were very much influenced by the victory of Japan and what they can learn from Japan. Right. So the most important uh, um, event that occurred during that time was 1905, the partition of Bengal. Now that was indeed the work of Lord Curzon. He made the partition on the plea of administrative convenience, but the real intention was to disband the Hindu Muslim from the national spirit, to break the solidarity of the Bengali intelligentsia, and to create a Hindu Muslim rift. So, to the Indian, the partition seemed to be a master plan to destroy the nascent nationalism, because at that time, the people, the intelligent, the educated masses were becoming aware of what was happening in India, and there was a great need to be free. So the partition of Bengal led to a new stage of the freedom struggle of the country. Under the leadership of the dynamic uh, uh, person such as Surendranath Banerjee, a strong movement was launched in Bengal to put pressure on the government to annul the partition. And uh, they, their programs uh, included picketing of the shops and the bonfire of foreign goods became the order of the day and the movement was popularly came to be known as the Swadeshi movement. So that was in the whole country. So what was happening in Andhra? So the significant cause for the spirit of Bande Matram was a reactionary policy of the Governor General Lord Curzon. And he was an imperialist. He had no sympathy with the aspirations of the natives. So this uh, partition of Bengal in 1905 roused fierce spirit of nationalism among the Indians, including the Andhras. It was felt in different parts of, the, of Andhra. In 1906 and 1911, Andhra politics was shaped by the Vande Matra movement. And the ideals was to get a freedom, to boycott the foreign goods, Etc. And so in 1906 in Madras, an industrial association was started by the leading citizens to propagate the ideal Swadeshi and, the f and for the sale of Swadeshi 
articles. A Swadeshi League also was established and in Karnul's subscriptions also were collected to send students to Japan to learn glass making, the concept of being self-reliant, the concept of uh, empowering the Indians or the others. That was the idea behind this particular uh, activity. And uh, we also see, but then when all these things were happening, we see that Surindranath Banerjee was arrested when he went for a conference in Bengal in 1906. And uh, so that created a lot of commotion in the country. People were very much upset about that. And then in several towns, like the impact also was felt in Andhra. So in uh, places like uh, such as Rajamandri, Kakinada, Vijanagaram, and uh, Guti, protest meetings were also held. And during this time only that we have certain slogans that became very popular that was Vande Matram Manade Racham and the song Vande Matram also became very popular in Andhra. And one more thing which has uh, spirit of this moment was the, the visit of Bipin Chandrapal to Andhra. He visited different parts of Andhra, Vijayanagaram, Vishakhapatnam, but then when he went to Vijayanagaram, Vishakhapatnam, he could not really get the, the response that he wanted. And then uh, on the 17th of April, he visited Kakinada and he talked about Vedanta, he talked about Swaraja. And uh, he said that uh, Swaraja was a national ideal and boycott of the foreign goods was an instrument of getting what the Indians wanted. And so he stayed in Rajmandri for some time and he talked to the people. And during that time, we see that the youth of the town, they become very much inspired. And then uh, actually before that even, they had founded an association that is called Bala Bharati Samiti. This was uh, started. And then prominent men such as uh, Ganti Lakshmana, brother of Ka Andhra Kesri, Tangutani Prakasham, and other people also were very much associated with that. So in addition to giving talking to people on uh, topics such as Swaraj, Swadeshi, boycott, and the work that was being done by Brahma Samaj, Bipin Chandrapal also, he opened what is called as a Godavari Swadeshi stores, the concept of encouraging Indians to use the native made products. So the Karnam of Rajamandri, uh, Guneshwara Rao also was very much influenced, was very much impressed by it, and he had donated a sum of thousand to Pal as donation. So from Rajamandri, uh, Bipin Chandrapal went to Vijayawada, where he was a guest of the Raja of Munagala and he addressed in two meetings. So what I'm trying to tell you is that the, the visit of Raj, uh, Bipin Chandrapal to different parts of Andhra has inspired the people. He went to Machlipatnam and uh, there he was very enthusiastically, uh, very enthusiastically welcomed. And uh, so he appealed to the masses and uh, the masses, the people, uh, were to liberally support the Indian Andhra National Educational Committee which was being formed at Rajamandri. And this was uh, why the purpose was to introduce us to establish a national school and college to help the students who have been expelled from the government colleges for their active participation in the Vande Matra movement. So what was the impact of Bipin Chandrapal? So there was a formation of Young Men Samaj Samiti, Swaraj Samiti, establishment of a committee uh, in order to set up a national school at Machlipatnam. And in the due course of time, Andhra Jatiya Kalashala also was formed, and Rajamandri and Machlipatnam became important centers of Swadeshi movement in Andhra. So when you talk about Andhra Swadeshi movement, we definitely have to talk about these two places. And uh, so when this movement was going on, what was the impact on the students? Uh, the students were very much uh, involved in that. They expressed their national feelings by wearing Vande Matram badges. They wore the Vande Matram badges and they greeted one another with the slogan Vande Matram. And the uh, principal of the Arts and Training College at Rajamandri, Mr. Hunter, uh, did not like it much. So on the 19th of March in 1907, uh, a month before Paul's arrival at Rajamandri, he convened a meeting of the students and forbade them from wearing Vande Matram badges or shouting the slogan Vande Matram. And one of the students was Gadi Chala Hari Sarvottama Rao. Okay, when he addressed Paul and uh, he was very happy about it on the, on the 24th of April, and Mr. Hunter did not like it, and he debarred 138 students out of 222 
from appearing for the examination for two years. This was also approved by the governor in council and Hari Sarvottama Rao was debarred from employment as a teacher in any government or aided school and he was also debarred from employment in any office under the government. So Hari Sarvottama Rao was targeted in that way but then he entered the public life and he made significant contribution to the library movement and the adult education. And so we see that Rajamandri College incident marked the beginning of Andhra students' participation in the, in the freedom struggle of the country. So we see that the youth of those days were very much involved. So what were the results of the One Day Matra movement? It quickened the political awakening in Andhra. People became more and more aware of what was happening and what they need to do. It led to the establishment of national educational institutions and Swadeshi stores. The concept of uh, being self-reliant and use of uh, the Indian-made products instead of going in for the foreign products. Many young men went to Japan for industrial training. And secret terrorist uh, societies were also established in different parts of the country. But in Andhra, it did not make much impact. There was one person by name Chanchaya who was the only one from Andhra who joined the Gadar party, but then he did not continue in it. He later left it. Okay? So thus we see that the Vande Matra movement pro produced those results. And by 1910, Vande Matra movement and Swadeshi movements began to lose their momentum. Because by that time, moderates had gained more popularity. And uh, Tilak was imprisoned. And Bipin Chandrapal also was imprisoned. And Aurobindo Ghosh settled down in Pondich Pondicherry and he took to spiritual life. So in Andhra, the political leadership went into the hands of moderates like Konda Venkatapaya and B. N. Sharma. And then we come into the year 1919 when uh, we see the advent of Gandhi. So Gandhi was the person who was responsible in a big way to, to get freedom for us. Mah Mahatma Gandhi entered into the arena of Indian politics and he dominated the political arena till the country became free in 1947. He used very unique principles such as non-violence and satyagraha. And these principles were used against the British government and he was a champion of many movements. And perhaps he was the right kind of leader of the country of those days. And uh, it was, it was uh, because he used his power or his uh, managerial skills to bring about a change. Important events which occurred during that particular period, which led to the non-cooperation movement, was the Rowlett Act, Jallianwalabag Massacre, Jallianwalabag Massacre and the Khilafat movement. I need not tell the details of it because we have studied about it in the second year. When we talk about the Rowlett Act, Jallianwalabag Massacre, when so many people were killed by General Dyer and then Khilafat movement relates to the defeat of Turkey in the world war and the way it was treated and the Indian Muslims were offended and the resentment, all of that. So that was a Khilafat movement and after that we see that Gandhi supported these movements and then we see the beginning of another movement that was started by Gandhi and that was non-cooperation movement. So what was how, why, what led to this non-cooperation movement? So the Government of India Act 1919 was passed by the Parliament to give effect to the Montford reforms. And then accordingly, elections were to be held in November 1920. And in September 1920, we see that the special session of the Congress was held at Calcutta and the prominent Andhras again attended the session. So what I'm trying to tell you is that Andhra though it is in the south part of the country, was very much involved with the activities of the Congress. They were following what was happening in the country of those days. And they wanted to do their best to get freedom from the British. So in September, when the special session of the Congress was held in 1920, we see that uh, eminent uh, leaders, people from Andhra, like Konda Venkatapaya, Pattabhi Sita Ramaya, Duggirala Gopalakrishnaya, uh, K. Kaleshwar Rao, and the others, they attended the meeting. And in that particular meeting, Gandhi came up with a what, one particular resolution that he would use non-violent, non-cooperation. 
and it was accepted with overwhelming majority and the non-cooperation uh, non program among other items included programs such as renunciation of all government titles, boycott of legislatures, law courts, government schools and colleges. But then from among the 30 delegates who attended this particular session, we see that Konda Venkatapaya, he did not really like this particular idea, but then he accepted the, uh, the, 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 the call of Gandhi and he, he has done his best and he resigned his membership of the Madras legislature. And then many meetings were held and uh, this particular person, he visited many places and then he encouraged the people, the youngsters, from voting. So Konda Venkatapaya toured several districts to see that the elections were boycotted. And as a result of that, very few voted in the elections. And the result of that was the Justice Party. It was formed uh, to protect the interest to, of the Brahmins. It came out successful as a, result, as a result of the boycott of the elections by the Congress. So that's what we understand is that Konda Venkatapaya has done his best to see that we did not support the elections at that time. Andhra responded very enthusiastically to the call of, of Gandhiji. And Guntu district took a leading part in the non-cooperation movement because they have organized no tax campaign at uh, Pedanandi Padu. And then there was a forest Satyagraha at Palnadu. And then the other moment, another event was Chirala, Perala, Satyagraha. So what was so? So we see that the Andras followed the leadership of Gandhi during 1921 and 23, and they have made very impressive sacrifices for the uh, uh, for the freedom of the country. Inspired by the leadership that was provided by men like Desha Bhakta, Kunda Venkatapaya. Andhra Ratna, Dugirala, Gopala Krishnaya, Andhra Kesari, Tangutiri Prakasham and the others. We see that Andhra people have very enthusiastically participated in the non-cooperation movement that was started. And All India Congress Committee session at Vijayawada, which happened in April 1921, we see that you know it was something which was a very notable, noteworthy event because very good representation was there. Thousands of people from all over the of Telugu districts, they attended the session and they wanted to see their leaders as well. And uh, then it was also, the, it was a session in which very important decisions were taken, such as they decided to collect one crore for Tilak Samaj Fund. Gandhiji accepted the tricolor flag that was designed by Pingali Venkaya with slight modifications Subsequently, that particular flag with the modifications became the national flag of our country. So thus, we see that. And then after that, we see Mahatma Gandhi also toured the coastal districts of Andhra. And he, and he attended and addressed many meetings at Kakinada, Rajamandri, Eluru, Machlipatnam, Chirala, Nelluru, and other places. And uh, many women were inspired by these uh, by these meetings and we see that they also have uh, participated and some of them also were not really you know um, going back to sacrifice their lives even so they were very much committed the women also came forward okay and the heart at Vijayawada was complete and it was also very spontaneous and another important event that we talk about that happened during the course of non-cooperation movement was what is called as a Chirala, Perala struggle. So where, what is this uh, uh, glorious episode? Supposed to be the, one of the glorious episodes in the freedom movement. Chirala, Perala are two neighboring villages in Bapatla Taluk of Prakasham district. These two villages together with the villages of uh, Jandrapeta and other places, they constitute an administrative unit called as a Chirala union. And they, they were paying something like 4,000 rupees per annum as taxes. But then in 1919, the Madras government constituted Chirala and Perala into a municipality. And this increased the tax burden of the people to the tune of 40,000 per annum. 
And so that was something which was very difficult. And so that most of the people were not very wealthy. They were weavers and petty riots from the towns, from the lower income group. And they could not make such a contribution towards taxes. They made, they represented the government, but then they did not get any kind of a positive response. And then the people started no tax campaign under the leadership of Gopala Krishnaya and they refused to pay taxes that were levied on them. And in March 1921, 12 of these people who refused to pay the taxes were arrested. One of them was even an elderly woman, probably the first political prisoner in India. So under these circumstances, we see that there was a volunteer corps that was created and that was Ramadandu. And this was organized by Gopalakrishnaya and the purpose was to serve the needs of the community. On the 30th of March, Gopalakrishnaya went to Vijayawada, met Mahatma Gandhi, uh, who had come to attend the AICC session. Mahatma Gandhi also visited Chirala and he advised the people to continue the no tax campaign. He wanted uh, the people to continue what they had started. But the people followed his advice and um, they also, you know, they did not want to pay the taxes and then they moved out of the villages and they evacuated their homes on the midnight of the 25th of April 1921 and they settled on the outskirts of the village and they made, a, they made up a small, const, uh, small village or township called as Ramnagar. They stayed there for 11 months, but then they suffered a lot because of hot summer and the rains that followed. And one more thing which was very problematic for them was finances. And we don't really see that many uh, came forward to support them under the circumstances in September 1921, Gopala Krishnaya. Okay, he went to Barhampur, attend the Andhra Mahasabha conference. He also wanted to collect some funds for these people. But then during that time, we see that he was arrested. So the arrest of Gopala Krishnaya demoralized the people. And so no congressman also came forward to give any kind of a solidarity to the people. And under the circumstances, they had to return to their original homes. So why this, Chirala, this particular program uh, failed? Why? Because the Congress leaders, they did not really support the work of Gopala Krishnaya. No, no financial contribution was made towards the particular movement and the people could not continue that. And the next important uh, event that occurred as a course, during the course of non-cooperation movement was Forest Satyagraha of Palnadu. Now this was another important event, uh, event or episode and uh, the people had many grievances against the forest officials because these people were belonging to lower groups of income and uh, they could not, they had so many restrictions on them, um, they could not take their cattle into the forest. And, uh, if they paid any kind of a bribe, then some were allowed. And so these uh, happenings were really troubling them. And those who refused to pay the money or comply with the servants or servants of the government, the officials, they were prosecuted uh, for violating the forest laws. And then in 1921, what happened was, there was the severe shortage of cattle fodder. And uh, so these people wanted to take their cattle into the forest and then they wanted to, to be helped that way. But then no, pos no favorable response was given uh, by the government. So the people became very frustrated. They were very unhappy. So at uh, you know, places like Mocharla, the, uh, the, uh, the important town of that particular region, a social boycott of all the government officials was organized. So that means they won't, uh, the shopkeepers won't sell any of their products to the garment servants, the barbers will not work for them, the, the washermen will not go and uh, wash the clothes, all these things were done. And then the collector of the area visited the area to find out, but even he was also, uh, no, he also faced the same situation, which really uh, angered that particular collector. And then in July 1921, two well-known Congress leaders of Guntur uh, they visited, but then they were uh, received very enthusiastically 
and very happily, which did which angered the collector further. Okay, so we see that the reaction of the people offended the government, but then the government also was very very insensitive to the need of the people. And the one thing was on top of it, we see that the Congress leaders were also arrested. And so with the arrest of the Congress leaders, the situation in Palnadu deteriorated and social boycott became transformed into a no tax campaign. So the people began to violate the forest laws and they began to take the cattle into the forests and they were not you know, for paying the taxes and the movement was spontaneous. The Congress leaders tried to dampen the movement, asked the people not to violate the forest laws but to continue the social boycott. But then people did not listen. So the no tax campaign became intensified. It led to a lot of clashes. It led to a lot of clashes. Uh, there was a lot of clashes between the people and the guards. The police tried to terrorize the people. So a lot of violent situation was developing um, because of this particular uh, event. And so in February 1921, police were driven out of many villages. There was one place called in Veldurti. The police were besieged in a bungalow where they had encamped. Somehow they managed to escape. And the collector of the area and the superintendent police of that area visited the village the next day and they arrested a number of people. So we see the reaction of the people and the, the, the action or the, the way the government also was responding. Most serious incident occurred near the village on the 26th of February 1920 to the police and the forest officials, they seized 50 goats and 125 uh, sheep buffaloes and they took them to a pond at Mutkur. So on the same day as they were going, they were attacked by 300 men and women and the cattle were, uh, no, they were rescued. So the police opened fire. So the situation became more uh, violent and uh, men, uh, some people, three persons were killed including the leader of the group, group by name uh, Kanuganti Hanumantu. And then because of the firing and all the crowds also became dispersed, the people also became demoralized and they gave up their Satyagraha and by 1st March 1922, normalcy was also restored. So thus we see that non-cooperation movement and what I'm trying to tell you is that when the non-cooperation movement was started in India, Andhra responded very enthusiastically. Another important event that was part of the national movement in India in Andhra was the Rampa Rebellion that was organized by Alluri Sita Ramaraju. He was one, uh, so the Rampa Rebellion was one of the most important episodes of the freedom movement in Andhra. It was a rebellion by Alluri Sita Ramaraju. And uh, so the Aluri Sita Ramaraj rebellion is popularly known as Rampa rebellion. But then one important point is that it was not launched under the aegis of the Congress. Now it lasted, this rebellion lasted for about two years and five months. And um, Aluri Sita Ramaraj actually was influenced by Gandhi, his uh, concept of non-cooperation movement. But then he was a Kshatriya, he does not want to use uh, non-violent methods. He believed in war to achieve his objectives. So in July 1921, he went to Chittagong and participated in a secret meeting in Bengal. Um, um, he met the revolutionaries there. On his return, he chose the Gudam Hills of East Godavari district as his area of operation. And uh, so he was a person who was very much uh, uh, interested in getting freedom. He wanted to teach the British a lesson, but then he also want, he chose the area because the people living in that area also were much affected by the misdeeds of the local Tasildar. And so we see that he was able to uh, do his work there. And then he also had some people, the locals who supported him very actively. Now his intention was uh, to get ammunition arms and ammunition. How he can get that? He can get that only by attacking the police station. So we see that he attacked the police stations and he tried to get the ammunition. So it happened on 22nd of August 18, uh, 1922. Uh, then he began to spread his activities in nearby areas, police stations at uh, the other places. And the government 
realize the seriousness of these particular happenings. And, he sent, and they sent a police party under the command of Scott and Hates. And Raju, he got information about it and he ambushed them and uh, so that was something which was very, very uh, brave on the part of Alluri Sita Ramaraju. So under these circumstances, the police withdrew, leaving behind a great deal of ammunition. So Alluri Sita Ramaraju got what he wanted. And then next, the police did not give up. They brought Malabar special police to resume the offensive against Raju. And a surprise attack also was made on Raju. Uh, but then somehow he managed to escape. For some time, he went out, meaning he, the police did not get any information about it. And the Malabar police withdrew. Then again, on the 18th of April, 1923, Raju resumed his acti activities and he attacked the police stations at different places like Annawaram. But then he could not get any ammunition. Why? Because the police were smart enough not to keep any ammunition in the police stations because they understood the intentions of Aluri Sita Ramaraju. And then on 18th of uh, September, his close associates, uh, Gam Mallu Dora, was um, captured. And then um, the later on, we also see that his associates were being captured. But then government uh, also got two companies of Assam rifles. He got two, uh, they got two as, uh, companies of Assam rifles and they appointed Rutherford as special commissioner in charge of the operations against Alluri Sita Ramaraju. But then Alluri Sita Ramaraju continued his activities. On the 6th of May 1924, one of his close associates, Pericharla Sure Narayana, popularly known as Aggi Raju, also was captured. And then the next day, Raju himself was captured. And uh, then he was brought to Koyur and he was shot dead. So thus, Rampa rebellion ended. The Andhra people feel very proud about it. Then the Congress did not really appreciate his activities. They, when, they made a, when they had a session, they also did not make any resolution appreciating the sacrifice of Aluri Sita Ramaraju. And the next important event in which Andhra became involved in the national movement was the visit of Simon Commission. The Simon Commission was constituted to get some sort of a response to study. They, they had to make a report on the reforms of 1919. But then the problem was no Indian was party to this particular Simon Commission. So on the 8th of number 1927, the British government announced the appointment of the statutory commission under the chairmanship of Sir John Simon to report on the working of the reforms of 1919. The Indians were very unhappy about it. They did not want to welcome the Simon Commission. The Andhra Mahasabha also decided to boycott the Simon Commission. And the municipal councils of uh, Tirupati, Karnool, Vijayawada, Eluru, Srikakulam, they all passed a re resolutions in favor of the boycott. Even liberals like Nyapati Subharao, they also decided to boycott this commission. So on the 3rd of February 1928, Hartel also observed in almost all parts of Andhra towns. Guntur and Ungol were selected by the government as the two towns for the visit of Simon Commission. The Andhra people and the citizens of these two towns were exhorted to express their resentment by boycotting the commission. The commission was greeted with black flags at Guntur and Ongol, and uh, Tangutudi Prakasham took a leading part in Madras city in conducting propaganda against the commission. Due to his brave encounter with the police only, he was given the title Andhra Kesari. So, so that was how we responded, that is the people of Andhra responded to the visit of Simon Commission. Then another important movement that was started in which Andhra again played an important role was the civil disobedience movement in Andhra. So on the 6th of April 1930, Mahatma Gandhi began his campaign of civil disobedience by setting out to Dandi with 78 followers to break the laws regarding the production of salt. This was the beginning of a nationwide mass movement. 
the Andhra Congress Committee also appointed Konda Venkatapaya as the, as the person uh, to the entire Andhra region to carry on the Satyagraha movement. And for each uh, district, we see that there was a dictator and a war council to advise him. We also see that a Sibram uh, of a military camp was also established in each district. And the main participants in the Salt Satyagraha were, uh, were the Andras, you know, the prominent people like, you know, K. Nageshwar Rao, um, we have Shastri, uh, the other people who have made a significant contribution to this particular movement. So what were the main features of this Salt Satyagraha? One of the things which is very interesting is that many women participated in big numbers. Many women also were sent to jail. Prominent among them was Srimati Bharati Devi Ranga and the other people. Okay? And we also see that no, on the 8th of May 1923, Mahatma Gandhi was released from prison and he suspended the movement on the 14th of July 1933 because earlier also in 1932 police opened fire on the satyagrahis at uh, Brahampur on the 15th of January 1932 injuring many so the while the movement had turned very violent because Gandhiji believed in non-violent methods he believed in satyagraha and he wanted the, the national movement to be completed the object to be achieved in the most non-violent methods but then when the movement became so very violent he was compelled to, uh, do, to discontinue, to suspend the movement in, 19, in 1933. Okay. The other important movement that also was done, uh, in which Andhras again participated, what was Quit India Movement in Andhra. Quit India Movement in Andhra, or it is also called as August Movement, was launched by Mahatma Gandhi on the 8th of August 1942 to gain independence from the British rule. The Congress ministries resigned from office in November 1939. By 1941 to 42, the war situation both in Europe and Asia was not very, very favorable to the Allies. I'm talking about the Great War that was happening, the Second World War that was happening, in which England was a member of the Allied forces. The British wanted to the to wanted the support of the Indians. They wanted them to support the war. And they decided to resolve the Indian political deadlock by sending Sir Stafford Cripps to India in March 1942. Sir Stafford Cripps, he came to India. He negotiated with different political parties. But then he could not really convince the people. He released to the press the declaration of the government, stating that India would be given dominion status and the right to leave the commonwealth after the war. And the other proposals included setting up of a constituent assembly to implement these proposals. The defense of India would be under the British during the war, etc. But then these proposals were not accepted by all the parties in India. The government of India arrested Gandhiji and the members of Congress Working Committee also were arrested. So this angered people and that led to a lot of disturbances in different parts of the country. Then what was the reaction in Andhra? In coastal Andhra, riots broke out in different towns. Police opened fire at Tenali. So in some of the areas, the incidents also, the whole thing also became very, very violent because on the 12th of August, Tenali, there was police firing, and that led to the death of many people. And firing took place at Guntur and also Bhimavaram on the 13th of August and the 17th of August, respectively. So thus we see that Andhra actively participated. And these were the moments in which Andhra played a very leading role. So what we try to, so what do we learn from all this? we understand that the Indian national movement was a significant event which changed the course of the history of India. Many Indians very actively participated and there was the dynamic leadership of Mahatma Gandhi and the others. And they have helped to achieve the much desired freedom from the foreign rule. And Andhra played a very important role in the Indian national movement. Their contribution is very noteworthy.
but then it is our duty. So what do we learn? What's the lesson that we learn? We learn that we need to fight against injustice. We need to be self-reliant. We need to work hard. We need to believe in our goals and we need to take our country forward. It is our responsibility as the young citizens of India to respect our country, to respect the people who fought for our country, for our freedom, to remember the names of people and their contributions of India, of the Indians overall, and also the people from Andhra who have done their best in uh, getting very enthusiastically involved in this particular national movement. The Andhras played a very important role in the Indian national movement. Their contribution is very noteworthy. So it is our duty to remember the sacrifices that were made by them and do our bit in taking our country forward. Thank you.